Well, hello, and welcome back to Season 5, Episode 9 of Wind Down Wednesday with my Lady of the Week, guys. Oh, Lord, I got two more episodes for this season, and then I am going on a little hiatus. And when I tell y'all I'm leaving for about a month, your girl will be gone for about a month. Anywho, this evening's live is titled, Can We Have It All? Can we have the marriage? Can we have the children? Can we have the career? Well, my lady of the week this week has figured out how to do just that. If you guys give me a second, I will bring her into the wine room. Before I do that, I have to give a very, very special shout out to my makeup artist, Mr. Alex at MUA Alex. It's his birthday, guys, so please do me a favor. Go over to his Instagram and show him some birthday love. Again, his Instagram handle is M-U-A Alex with two X's. So please go over there and wish him a happy birthday for me. I would greatly, greatly appreciate it. All right, guys, let's see who we have in the wine room so far. Hi, people. Hi, everybody. I love when you guys are on time. Hey, Tracy. Hey, lady at Nessie 1028. Hey, lady. Thank you for joining us. Hey, K Dabney 9701. Thank you so much for joining us. Ooh, my lady of the week is here as well. Hey, D Manic. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Ayana Pilates. Thank you, girl. I'll take that. Thank you, thank you, thank you. All right, guys, listen. When we get off this live, I need you guys to head over to my lady of the week, IMDB. When I tell you her list of credits are extensive, she's an actress, she's a singer, she's a writer. Like I said, she's a wife of over 30 years, and she's a mother to a recent college graduate. Whew. And the only way that I can describe her is she's just a badass, y'all. I'm sorry. That's what she is. So give me a second. I'm going to bring my lady of the week, Miss Yvette Quezon, into the wine room. Let's bring her in, guys. And I'm playing a little Stevie because uh, she has a, a connection with Stevie Wonder, y'all. Give me a second, and I'll tell you all about it. <laughs> Hi, Yvette. Hey. How are you? Ooh. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Can you see me? You know, girl, I can I'm see you just fine. Good, good. Can you see me? Beautiful. Thank you. So do you. Hi, Yvette. Hi, beautiful. I'm yeah. so excited. All, all you know together because I know how you show up. Hey. <laughs> for lives, but every day, this is you. So, well, you know, you know, I like to put it together. Just a little something, something. Just a little something, something. Right. Do it well, girl. Wonderful. Well, welcome to the wine room. Thank you. I have uh, my wine. I just, Did I you just, bring your wine? Well, honey, I, let's go ahead and toast it up real quick. Yes. Clean, clean, clean. Yeah. <laughs> take Thank a you. sip because I always say if you don't take a sip, then it didn't happen. So mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. I'm going to make sure we take a sip. So real quick, uh-oh, I was telling the audience uh, or giving them a little background information on you. Um, but if you would, please tell them who you are and where you are from. Well, again, at Kassan, and I am originally from Washington, D.C. Yeah, Chocolate City for those old heads. Yes, the original now, Chocolate City. D.C., because you know they got D.C., Maryland, and Virginia in there all together. Um, but yeah, I'm from, from there, and um, I've been in L.A. for about 30 years. Cause I'm wow. coming up. Yeah, we moved out here after a year after I got married. And um, let me see what else. You know, well, look, look well, I'm gonna I'm give them everything else because what okay. I want to do before we get started, I want to, as they say, give you your flowers. And okay. we're gonna talk about giving people their flowers a little later yeah. on as well. But before I get into this conversation, first of all, Yvette, I went to your IMDb mm -hmm. and while I knew, I had no idea, Yvette, how extensive and broad your career has been and continues to be. I did not know that you starred in the original Dreamgirls. Yes, I actually, well, let me just, I starred in the international, I came 
into Dream Girls when they um, put together the international tour. So wow. we went and we went to Paris. We also did the States again because they had done that in the national tour and right. then went back to Broadway. So it, I can say I Dream Girls on Broadway. Um, okay, so, so anybody that knows anything about Dream Girls, you know that you have to have some chops. Meaning you have to sing. You don't sing to be in Dream Girls. You have to sing. So, <laughs> Yvette, yeah. oh my I'm, gosh. I'm, I'm probably, well, that's one of the, um, one of the things that I'm very, very proud of because that wasn't, I, I wasn't looking for that. Mm. I, I wasn't looking to join Dream Girls. I do remember watching Jennifer Hudson sing the roof off of the theater on right. Inter they opened because they did a big uh, like you know a clip and I was just like everybody else I was like what is happening right now wow. and I told my voice instructor I said I I would love to to do that to be in that show and really quickly then what happened um I ended up becoming Miss DC Black America. I entered Yes, yes, as, yes, I read that. <laughs> I love it. Another, I did not plan because I'm not a pageant girl per se, but my girlfriend and I, we were like, yeah, let's just enter the pageant and see what happens. You know, because when you're younger, you're you're fearless. Right, you know, absolutely. absolutely. So I um, entered one and then I had the opportunity. I was invited to audition because Dream Girls came to Washington, D.C. at the um, National Theater. And so we would do this. Dream Girls would do this every city, the big cities that they went to auditions. And so I came in, met Michael Bennett, Michael Peters, and um, then they invited me to New York. I had to go in not once, not twice, not three times, but four times. Wow. So first thing always happened like that. It did not. It was it was quite extensive. And I was at that point, I was like, I'm getting this job, like for real. Wow. Because I put in the time. So that was pretty much the start of my theatrical because I had been, you know, record my my whole thing was recording, recording, recording. I wanted to record, which I did. But right. that's what I was thinking about. But as life, and this happens to all of us, we have a plan and the universe has another plan. Absolutely. So, Absolutely. and funny because eventually you'll probably get to where you wanted to anyway. Mm -hmm. um, that's, that was the start of that, Dream Girls. Yes. Okay, and, I, and so then I read that you also, you were on tour or you have worked with Whitney Houston, Mm -hmm. Stevie Wonder, Babyface, Yvette. It's like, okay, so first of all, audience, I've known Yvette for probably about 20, 20, 25 years, a long time. And let me say this to you. We had this conversation the other night. I said one of my favorite poems by Maya Angelou is when she says, people will forget what you said, people Bye. will forget what you did, but they will never forget how you made them feel, right? And Yvette, this is you 25 years ago when you are just doing it, doing it, doing it. But you were always so humble. You were always so kind and so gracious. And that is just who I remember and who you still remain today. So I just want to say thank you for always being just so, just such a beautiful spirit, first of all. When you know in this town that people have I, big egos, right? I, I do. I do. And I receive that and I appreciate that because and that I have to give to my mother and father, specifically my mother, because she always said to my sister and my brother and I, she's like, um, it doesn't matter how cute you are, how talented, how smart you are. At the end of the day, you have to be kind. Mm. And, should have humbleness. You can be uh, confident, but right. walk in, you know, being humble and being kind to people. And it was an adjustment when I came out here because, you know, this is Hollywood. This is a right. we, it, it's a it's a constant um, competition, I should say. You know, yes. you're you know you're auditioning. You're you're trying to find out, you know, what's going on. Where do I do this? Where do I do that? And all people aren't always so friendly, and they're not always. Mm -hmm. um, Want, wanting to give up information. 
Absolutely. Absolutely. I, I, I've never stop. you know, I've been blessed. And I guess the audience should know how we met. We met uh, in Tell them. because of Tracy Johnson. The yes, movie. Eclipse Salon. Yes, um, I, Tracy was on the Babyface tour. She was doing oh, I didn't Jack know that. Face's hairstylist. I mean, she did his hair. And wow. Was the only girl singer. Um, and I don't remember exactly. But anyway, I know there was, we were someplace and I needed to have my hair done. Because you know, when you out there on the road and you got your weave and it was, and yes. you know, yes. hair. And I said, I need my hair done. And she said, well, I'll do it for you. And she was so nice. Mm -hmm. And I come back, we're off the road. I find out, because I'm keeping in touch with her, she's opening her salon. And of yes. course, I'm coming to your salon. And there you were, this beautiful woman. And we talked. And yes. there you go. You see? Wow. And it's just, again, it's, it's people have to understand the impression that you leave on people when you meet them, you know, so that 25 years later, I could actually call you and say, hey, that I would love to feature you as my lady of the week. And without hesitation, you said, let's do it. Yes. So, how how the, the beauty of social media is you can keep in touch with people yes. and you can what's going on on um with them and you and i we have mutual friends so we would yes. see each other and always you've always been so nice so gracious you're not one of those people like excuse me who are you because those are there we have god no right. um but always been like that and i've appreciated it well thank you well girl look we can love we can continue loving on each other but i'm gonna get into this live real quick so the title of this live ladies and gentlemen it's called can we have it all. Can we have the marriage, the career, the children, all of that? And so, Yvette, I have to ask you because you, you've done it all, you continue to do it all. So do you think that women can actually have it all? I think have whatever, because everybody's, I think you can have it, but it's not going to, it may not look like what you think it's going to look like. That's one. And it's going to look differently each time because Here's the deal, and being a, a wife, a mother, and having a career, and it not doesn't not necessarily in that order, something is going to, you can't give each 100%. That's just not possible. Mm. Can't be, what I, I know to be true, we can't be everything, all things to everyone. Everybody, yes. Mm -hmm. And I'll be honest, sometimes the career took a back seat. Sometimes I had to, I, I would like to think that I always put my family first, but sometimes I couldn't because I had to do a job. Mm -hmm. the, the less though for me, and I will speak for me, is that I found the right partner. The Hello, partner. say that again. <laughs> uh, right. That did and has and continues to help me to be able to do professional things mm -hmm. or those do. Because I know my home is taken care of, our son is taken care of. Um, I say past because he's, and we still, I mean, we're parents until we die. He's 21, right. college, thank you, Jesus. But growing up, when I worked, I knew that it was covered. And he was yeah. like, yeah, do you, go do you. But I guess because I am the, the kind of mother that I always wanted to be, or I should say I wanted to be once I had my son, is that I just never wanted to miss anything because there are no do-overs with children. Mm -hmm. you, You're right. not going to walk a, that first step again. They're not going to say that first word again. You know, there's that first is just going to be that first. So <laughs> I had a choice to be home more than to be on the road. And I didn't want to raise him on the road because I know that life is completely different and um, so, yeah, there were quite a few sacrifices. So to your question, can you have it all? I think you just need to figure out what you would like your all to look like. Mm -hmm. And like I said, it's just not going to all be together because the, the people that we, on, you know, that we look at, oh, my God, they're able to have this amazing career and they're doing something is, is not getting 100. Trust me. Mm. Okay, so do, do you think that, women do themselves a disservice when they don't go after their passion 
because no. you've been able to do that. But there are some women that say, well, I'm going to put this on the back burner and be mom, be wife, and then let that kind of fall by the wayside. No, I don't. I think it's all about choices, you know, mm -hmm. choices. You know, mm -hmm. I'm going to judge a, a woman, another woman for deciding to, it's like having children. I waited, we waited a long time to have a kid. And I, I mean, I was 11 years. Wow. To, because that wasn't important to me. Now, other women, and they've, you know, because sometimes people can just be so rude, you know, like, oh my God, you're, you don't want to have a kid? Like, no, you can't miss what you don't have. Right. But once I the angel in my arms, I can't imagine him not being in my life. So that was my choice to do my career for those years. And then I decided, you know what? I'm ready to have a family. Mm -hmm. I'm ready to, you know, to be a mother. I don't think, I don't look at, I'm not going to judge a woman for making that choice. If she decides, you know what, I want to have my career because it is, it's hard. And, and even as you're mothering, and I'm sure you know that you experience it, sometimes you're like, I just want to do me. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, that's so, that so does creep in because we don't talk about that. Only thing right. we talk about is how beautiful it is to have these children. Right. And, and it is. And they mm -hmm. are lovely. But it's it's the hardest job I've ever done, yes. you know. And continues because <laughs> you think when they turn eighteen, you're like, all right, yeah, because it's later. <laughs> when they're babies, because you can control the situation. Right. Once they go right. to the world, you can only hope and pray that they have taken in all the things that you have taught them and listened, and you know, and then you sit up and you you know worry sometimes. Most of the time, are they going to be okay? But yes. no. Um, we have so many hats to wear. You know, we are keeping so many balls in the air. And not to take anything away from my he certainly is an amazing father. But we just are, that's how we're wired. You know, right. we we take care of the details. Multitaskers. Multitask, we take care of the details. We, we want to make sure everything is just right. You know, I know I do. Um, so yeah, it's it's been quite a lesson. Mm -hmm. So let's talk about you and your career and why it was important for you to still pursue your your purpose, your passion. Why was that important for you? Because it's something I always wanted to do. I knew when I was a little girl, I wanted to sing. Mm -hmm. I sang in the church. I sang in my house. I sang at my, for my relative. You know, it's that, I mean, literally, it is that, um, you know, thing you see when comedians talk about or on a TV show. That was me. I was singing all the time. And wow. I just wanted to perform. And I knew I wanted to act. So I just kept, I, that's what I, I went after. Mm -hmm. And I stopped. I re, my happy place is on the stage. I always mm -hmm. say that. That is my happy place. Not that I'm not happy with my husband and my son and my family and my friends, but it's just different. You know what I mean? It's where I feel the most alive. Mm, I love that. Yeah, I it's where I'm most alive, where I'm in a, a comfort, in a place that I just feel like I know. You belong. And mm -hmm. I belong. Yes, and I like, yeah. belong. Yeah. yeah. And that's yeah. part two of being a mother. I think sometimes when, the way you know, for me, and, I'm, and when I speak, I'm really, I am speaking for me, but I think other women would agree. You get so in engulfed into your children and into your you sometimes you can lose yourself absolutely you know, you can lose who you are artistically or it, it doesn't matter what, what it is whatever it is you have set out to do you can kind of lose it and you you have to kind of get it back so even now my son has graduated I now am like okay what is this next chapter going to look like I know what I wanted to but what is that going to look like? Because he doesn't need me in the same way, obviously. Right. And he's an adult, so I don't have to do all the things that I used to do. Right. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm for him. Mm -hmm. I have a saying that children come into your life, not you come into their life. And I think to your point about a lot of times when women lose themselves in their children, it's because they're trying to fit into their child's life. 
mm -hmm, instead mm -hmm. of the other way around or figuring out a way to to incorporate mm -hmm, you know mm -hmm. if you will you know mm -hmm. so to your point about you know getting lost okay so as far as your career is concerned Yvette, you've been doing this for over 30 plus years what do you attribute to the longevity of your career and not just a career in one genre not like you just did broadway this whole time you've done broadway you've done film you've done television you're writing i mean what do you attribute that longevity to just doing as men doing different things not being just stuck on one thing Although I will say you need to have a one thing that you're really good at. Hello, master something. Who yeah. yeah. <laughs> yes. But you can, you know, like I, I always say, I think when I sent it to you, I, I say when I resist my talents, singer, actor, writer, mm -hmm. because that's how I work. That top one is my, that's the one. Mm -hmm. Now that's the way for my acting is just, that's how it happened. It really was singing, acting, writing. I mean, I just started writing here in the last couple of years. So I'm, I feel like I'm, I'm a newbie mm. and stepping out, you know, literally stepping out of my comfort zone because I, I felt like most people, they're like, oh, I, you, you need to need to do this, you need to do that. And all my writing, writer friends who have TV shows, have done films, they're like, just start writing. Don't, you, you're putting too much thought into yes. the process of it, just start because writing yes. writing so you're just going to yes. be right anyway, so just start and you can the form part of it will, of that um but also whatever i've done just like when i decided i wanted to do television when i came out here i went to take classes i mean you mm. gotta i didn't just jump in it i literally said okay i want to know how this works because there's a process to that as well and i think even here in these last two to three years We've had to pivot, all of us, because of COVID. So now I'm having to, or I've had to, I have to put myself on tape myself. Now I'm getting into the technical part of things, mm. which is interesting. I'm st still doing. Um, so we're, we're just kind of learning. I think that's why I've been, I've been hungry to always learn, like, because I know things are constantly changing. You know, I... I think I fought social media as long as I could. And then I was mm -hmm. like, if you use it like I'm doing today, it'll be all, it'll be fine. Right, right. Yeah, I think a lot of times people overthink social media, you know, and they just kind of focus on the bad of it. But there's so much good that comes yeah. out of it, you know. And I connect with people all over the world. Like yes. people who I have met, people in other countries, so, you know, once you start to think about it in a different way, instead of just, you know, oh, yeah, now I'm going to be, you know, no. And of course, the best way to use marketing and, you know, get word out like we did about this, about anything. So, no, I, I just feel like I've been able to stay in this because I keep, I'm not afraid to continue to learn, continue to go. I, I don't let the noise, the age, you know, because... Yeah, because yeah, I, I was going to ask you about that. You know, we see that, especially in Hollywood, you know, when we get over 50, even over 40, actually, that they kind of put the women out to pasture. But the men, you see them doing romantic leads in their 50s, 60s, 70s. So, with young, with would you say? Men. Yes. Yeah. Like, yes. Why, because we're still sexy. We still are romantic, you know. I mean, I just think it's changing a little bit, a little bit. I see it. Um, but no, I had to just have a come to Jesus talk with myself about, you know, you're not going to get into that thing about, oh, you're too, you know, we'll say seasoned. Seasoned, to yes. <laughs> yes. It is, yes. The older you get, the less roles there are. Then, mm -hmm. then, then so... I'm a black woman, so that's enough. Then I'm in another category, you know. Um, so I, I'm like, well, there are roles out here, mm -hmm. and it's to create them. That's why mm -hmm. I started. You know, that's it right there. I want to see my do something right, write it for myself or for another woman who uh, may 
something. So yeah, I just got constantly got to keep the noise away and keep out. So with that, what advice would you give to a woman who is seasoned and maybe just wants to start? You know what I mean? Maybe for so long she did the wife and the raising of the children. And now she's like, I've got this thing that's been gnawing at me and I, I want to start. But maybe she doesn't know where to get started. She's afraid of starting. What would your advice to her be? Well, first of all, depending on what it is she wants to do, let's say. I'm an acting just, okay. you know, in entertainment. Oh, okay, so she wanted to act. The first thing you want to do is maybe go uh, join a class, get it into a class. It doesn't have to be anything elaborate. It can be something really, I mean, there's classes everywhere, and some are more expensive than others, but, and you do want a good, a good teacher. But just get in a class. Maybe, maybe you even um, get into like a theater, a small theater group, you know, a small theater group, uh, and start just naturally, you know, getting your chops out there, getting comfortable, getting com because it's something to be on a stage in front of people, whether it's mm -hmm. a few or many. So mm -hmm. I think um, that was the first thing I would say, well, how serious? And then, no, the first question, how serious are you about it? How, how something you've been thinking about or do you really want to do? Right. But you really want to do that? Okay, here's what you Then you find. Go if there's some classes go see if there's a, the a theater group that you can join um it just takes that one step it, it really is that simple it, it, mm -hmm. it's not as we make things because then things will start to fall in place because you'll start meeting people because it's really about the networking too yes, yes. Part of it. yeah it's a lot of network. A lot of, i'm telling you most of the things that you read about that i did they came through networking Whitney wow. came Whitney came through because my friend got sick and she couldn't do the gig I mean for uh, for Steve and that's how I got to do the Stevie gig the Whitney wow. gig was because I uh knew the musical director um Ricky Ricky and he called me and said can you do this Whitney gig which turned into the tour Y'all hear how she just casually dropped that the Whitney gig <laughs> I, I really have to pinch myself when I think about because she was extraordinary. That's a that's a talent we won't see. Ever, I don't think in my time anyway. Yeah. Gosh, and, and on with her, yeah that 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 one really um, it it pierced my soul when yeah. she died. I, I took that one hard because I mean it was it's incredible. It was, yeah. it was incredible to, um, to just be, like I said, to be on stage. And she was very down to earth, you know, yeah. she really, so I got to, to, to spend time with her outside of that other persona. Mm -hmm. And um, I've been blessed to work with some really, really talented people. I saw I mean, David Foster. I mean, that, that. David Foster, and that came through a friend. Because they were like, girl, what you doing? We need this voice. I'm telling you, it really is about the network. And I've, I've really been imparting that on young people. My son and I'm like, you need to get your network. And I'm not talking about using people. You know, like call them. Like, can you hook me up? That kind. Of, it's just, you want to pick people. First of all, you just want to surround yourself with people. Creating who, relationships. Yeah. Yes. Building, mm -hmm. But you're watching them. You're seeing they're doing things. Do you know what I mean? So mm -hmm. I'm like, well, they're doing, I want to do that. You know, and not look into cause there's hanger those hanger oners that just want to mm -hmm. be in. But no, seriously, building a, building relationships, building that network, so that you can, um start to move to move in the world. The way, you know, mm -hmm. I, I'm really proud. I have a, a group of people that I and I don't talk to them often, but I know if I call them, they will take my call. Absolutely. And, that's that also how you leave a situation too. Absolutely. Yeah. I always tell people it's equally important how you enter something and it's equally important how you exit. That so, part. Yes, definitely. Okay, so speaking of something you just said, even as it becomes with the networking, um, so as women, do you 
believe that we need to lean in more to each other now than ever? And if so, what do you think prevents us from doing that? Yes, question. I think we do. And I don't even know ever, but I think we always should have done it. I mean, mm -hmm. obviously, hopefully as you get older, you get smarter. Right. You, become, you know, I'm, I'm in my skin with myself. Um, we, we, society pits us against each other. And if we buy into it, this is where you get all the insecurities and you don't, we don't lean into it. But you got to be smart who you're leaning on and who you're leaning into. Ooh, say that again, Yvette. Hold on, say it again? <laughs> no, you got to be smart on who you're leaning on and leaning into. Because there are just like people, you just need to be with people who are going to support and love. There is nothing better than me getting a call just because. Don't nobody mm -hmm. want that. They just want to know, girl, I, you had you on my heart. I'm just saying, how you doing? To me, that's the best. The best, yeah. Because that yeah. means thought of me in a way, you really were like checking up on me to see. And I think I told this to you, it's why I have made sure that I, have, I give people their flaws. I tell them, I tell you, I love you. I tell you, I, I respect you. I tell you everything that people tell <laughs> A crowd of people when they're gone. When they die, right. They can't hear it. So right. I'm a, you never know. You'll never have to wonder, how does Yvette feel about me? How does, mm -hmm. what is she, you know what I mean? So I think that's important. So yes, we do need to lean on each other. More now than ever, we've got a lot of people, and I'm so glad we're talking about mental health now more, because right. you, our community, honey, we would like, mm -mm -mm. not mm -mm. here. We don't need no help. I'm good. <laughs> Right. No, we right. need help. We right. we we don't get I, we don't get awards for being the best, yeah. my strongest right. one. We don't. Mm -hmm. So get out of all of that because we do it. It's just innate. Mm -hmm. It's nothing wrong with saying, Tanya, girl. I I swear I need help. Mm -hmm. I need help, and I have been blessed. I have some amazing women in my circle and it's a small circle who I can call who will I can talk to about a plethora of things and I know confidence but I also know they'll tell me the truth because that's Absolutely. the hard Absolutely. You, that part right there you, you have to have people around you that do not tell you what you want to hear. Yeah. I don't and tell I, you the truth. Mm -hmm. and, and, and that can hurt too. Yes. You know, girl no. Mm -mm. That was funky. Right, that was funky. right, right, right. It, or, you know, you just think about this. And um, so we do. We need to, we really do. And we need to not, social media, it just picture that everything is, is perfect. And perfect. It, mm -hmm. It's wonderful. No, it ain't. We all, we just all trying to stay in it. And figure it out. Yeah. Yeah. Figure it out. So I love what you said about make sure you guys are giving people their flowers while they're still here to smell them. Yeah. You gotta lost, do it. I'm sure you've lost people. I've lo lost people. Um, and I've said, I actually said two, I, I remember specifically saying to someone, we got to get together and we're going to get together. And mm -hmm. I'm not, but three weeks later, I read on Facebook, which is horrible that this person has passed. Wow. And I've wow. said, because we could have, we could have gotten together. I don't, I mean, yeah, we're all doing, all, I'm busy, I'm busy, I'm busy. We all busy. Right. right. But we have time. So that's why I take the time to call. I'm always, I, I like to hear people's voice. I know we text a lot because it's easy to, you know, it's time. But I do. I want to hear your voice, Tanya. I know. No, I know. And we're all at fault for it because we get busy with life and everything else. But what I'm trying to be really intentional right now is to, like you said, make sure that I tell the people I love you, you know, um, make sure that I reach out. And more importantly for me, I have to write it down. So if I don't schedule it, so we get on the phone and you I'm say you want to get together and I don't put it on the calendar, I know it's not going to happen. 
But I if know. I put it on the calendar, then you best believe we're going to make it happen. That's so part, part of the listening. Yes. <laughs> yes. Yes. Oh, I, I hear you. But it is. I, I do. And and writing notes or, or whatever, doing just just have, calling somebody, hearing their voice is is really gold. Yes. Because also text, you can't tell the tone of a text. The tone of it. Yeah. And stuff get lost in translation when you text. And, so. so people will be like, what, that, what did that mean? Da, 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 da. And you done filled up the whole page with some emojis. And anybody <laughs> Right, like, huh? I don't read emoji. I don't know. Make it all wrong. I didn't mean that. So, I said, it's, it really is that saying. Um, I can show you better than I can tell you. Absolutely, that is my motto, honey. I can show you better than I can tell you. Okay, so real quick, bet I just want to go to the audience because there was actually actually a couple of questions in here, and someone had asked about a couple of things. Hold on, they said, um, "What was it like to sing live on Broadway?" incredible and i i had to go on for um as effie and i remember the first time i was in the wings and it felt like an out-of-body experience i you know every if they're being honest pretty much every performer has some bit of nerves but you know you work through it and everybody has a different way of working through it but there is that moment, and I remember then I was like, OMG. But once I got out, again, like I said, I just felt like, and you know, you got the lights and just all these people. It was, it was wonderful. It's one, And that's how I feel every time. That's how wow. I feel every time I stage, because I always want to, now in that particular situation, there's a wall, so I can't break that wall. And right. Talk about it. And, and that. Is that the fourth wall? <laughs> I've done uh, production. I have been able to talk, but mm -hmm. that's one of them. So you really want to, you know, get across. And and you know what? They were gracious because, you know, when you're going at created the role, you never know how that's going to work out. You know, like everybody's here to just Jennifer, um, Jennifer Holiday. Mm -hmm. But there's been many. Right. Many, right? Many of because right. really, okay. what you just want to do is get the character and the and, and the songs out the best you can. Okay, so I was <laughs> doing a little research, and um, I saw a video of you scatting. Y'all want me? Y'all want me scat? Uh, Miss Ella Fitzgerald. Oh yes, I got to play. In uh, at the Lesher Theater in Walnut Creek, up up in the Bay Area, because she's like probably my favorite, and I have I have many favorite um, artists, but she's probably my top female singer. So yes, I was elated and honored. Okay, so with that being said, Yvette, can you give us a little sample? Oh, so you are, so we do so we really doing this? <laughs> Oh, um, okay. Um, you, I'm sorry, I had to ask. <laughs> is that, if I, hey, look, I'm not going to be that. No, I can't. You know how people go, no. And then they right. start. No, no. Up, girl, wind it up. We, you do it. That's we're on the third song. Um, Okay, let me see a little bit. Um, Somewhere there's music, I'll faint the tune. Somewhere there's I'll hide the moon. There is no moon above when love is far away, too. Till it comes true that you love me as I love you. Scoot a dee ba doodin dee, ba po dee lee dee ba doodin dee da ba ba po dee lee dee be wo we da ba 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 po dee lee dee da be wo dee lee dee. You better. I love it. I love it. See, see that right there. So for all y'all that's trying to break in or in this industry if you can't just come off the top of your head hey, baby yes. or they will come for you if you it's like no nah, i need nope you just need to be able to do what you don't need a band you don't need anything because i've had this auditions without a pianist i've actually stopped somebody from playing because they really weren't playing well enough because Ooh. that's my time that's my time to shine so um and it took me a minute i mean i was you know, a little deeper into my career. 
um, when I did that. But then I was like, you know what? This is my time. And dude, he ain't on it. So I'm not going to let him mess it up. So I just kindly said, I said, do you mind? I'm going to sing this a cappella. Mm. So you hold your own because that's your moment. I love it. Okay, so I just have a couple more questions left before Thanks. I let you out of here. Oh my God. Thank you so much. You okay, so what would be your overall message as it relates to the topic? Can we have it all? What would be your message to the woman that's maybe struggling with that? Prioritize. Just figure out, and that might even be hard because. I would definitely say figure out what is important in the mo right in this moment. You know, all these things that we want to uh, have, want to get married, you know, friends, who, you know, they're trying to find a man. Right. And I hmm. say, don't look for just a man. Be very specific. You want someone who is dot, dot, dot. You know, be, make a list. Like we, we list everything else. List it out. Um, but I would say, yeah, prioritize. Prioritize what is important for right in that that time. And uh, because again, I I just don't see how you can have everything. I mean, I have I have a husband, I have a son, I and I have my career. But it's it's a, it's a struggle to kind of keep them all together. That's balance. not an, yeah. yeah the balance. It's, mm -hmm. it's the balance act is tricky it just is and sometimes it's perfect you know like you, you know how like one you have a day where everything is going right everything and that, yes that, all of that just starts i mean it's like well what happened to yesterday it was just great it's like anything it's just life yeah. so if as long as you can just kind of roll with the punches you need to have a really good support team it takes a village. That is, I know it's a cliche. It's a saying. It is truth. It is truth. Anybody that says, I think they're lying. You need us. Mm -hmm. You need us. I think that's with anything. Okay. You know. see that. Okay. So yeah. what <clears throat> has been the best, best advice given to you either personally or professionally? Um, be ready. That's one. Um, uh, my father was in the military, and I used this, and I tried to impart it on my son. He hadn't, he hasn't embraced it yet, but I, he will hopefully. Um, if you're late, if you're on time, you're late. Hmm. I'm, I'm all, I'm all about time, and that's something out here that I had to give you because everybody's into this. Well, let's do everybody's it. Everybody's late. Yes. Ish, as it ain't no ish on a on a watch or a clock. It's mm -hmm. you, you tell me you're eating at twelve. I'm looking. At 12. Um, but no, to just honor people's time, be prepared. Be kind, you know. Of course, they say it now. It's kind of a thing. Live your best life. But really, do live your best. I, I think now I really take advantage of the moments because I look so far ahead. I was missing. I was missing some really. The now. The present. Yeah. 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 I mean, yeah. like all the traveling that I did around with, you know, with Whitney, with all of the, with anybody that I was with, um, there were moments which I just, I, part of it was because I was just, when you're young, you're just like, oh yeah, this is happening. Why wouldn't it be happening? But it, everybody wants to be with me. Right. <laughs> you know, like you're there. So I, I wish I could have sat in that more and with some of the other things that were happening, really, really sat in it. And, and mm -hmm. but I did appreciate it. I enjoyed it and had the best, but I think we just need to not think about what's going to happen down the, next the road. Yeah, yeah, let's do it yeah. and kind of enjoy it. No, that's real. And that's something that I've, I've struggled with, but I'm really trying to be more intentional about just, just even being present in someone's presence. Yes. You know what I mean? Because you get on the phone, you start doing this, you got somebody standing there and you're, you're not even engaged. You're there but you're not present in their presence. And that's what I'm really trying to focus on now. That is huge. You see that even when we're out to dinner with our friends, everybody's got the phone. And I started with our, my girlfriends when we were out. It's like, okay, everybody 
put your phone away. The first person to grab their phone has to pay for drinks or pay for Ooh, dinner. Oh, I love that. I love that. I love and that. That'll, that'll stop you real quick. <laughs> I love that, for sure. If you're someplace so expensive. But no, just be, like you said, being in, in the... That, so yeah, those are, I mean, those are just people that Okay. All right. Last question. And then I'm going to let you get out of here. What is your favorite quote or mantra? What do you live by? You said it already. It was my. That, you know, what you did, what you said, but how you make them feel. And I'm paraphrasing, but that really is. And, and I, oh, and one that my mother always, always this too shall pass. Mm. And it really didn't hit me until I got older. Because when you're younger, you know how, how older people is just saying stuff to you. And you'd be like, what the hell is that? All right. Mm -hmm. I, I, my grandmother, I, who I used to visit in the country, and she would be like, ooh, thank you, Lord, for waking me up in my right mind. Now, when you're younger, you're like, what do you mean you're right? You got a mind. Well, hello. Your right mind, meaning that you are you can think about what it is, who you are, because we know dementia. We have people who are, you know, have yes. dementia. But also just, girl, when I'm struggling for a word, you know, um, mm. mm -hmm. you see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Like that. Or when you walk in the kitchen to get something and you get in there and you forget what you walked in there for. Okay, yeah. <laughs> and my, I woke up in my right mind, so I really take those are the things that I I really pull on. But my mom going, this too shall pass because it will. In the when you're in the storm, you don't you don't think you can get out of it. It just feels like you're the only one in the storm. But also, there is somebody that's actually really out there in it. I've learned that. Mm -hmm. My mother used to say, if you talk to enough people, they'll take all of your stuff to get oh, mm -hmm. out of it. Yeah. I really am grateful. I'm always, I feel blessed. I've, you know, I don't, I know when I was younger, I wanted to be a celebrity and a star. And I had people tell me, but you are a star. You are. You're a star. But what I, what I think of as, you know, like huge, but with that comes a whole, mm -hmm. trust me, I saw front and close working mm -hmm. with the I work with so you get a different perspective so I'm grateful to be able to do what I do and that I can go and sit at a restaurant or whatever and not all of that and still you know live my life and have a good time well honey you've done it you've done you. it well thank and you it's just been amazing and I am just so humbled and just so thankful that you were able to be here with us this evening. Again, guys, when we get off this live, I need y'all to understand who was on this live with us. <laughs> I, I, I don't know. The, I'm still figuring this whole Zoom and live out, but you can see me. So that's the most important. You can hear me. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. Thank okay. you for love. Absolutely. And you can't even see I got the t-shirt on. Look. Oh, I see it. Hey, ladies. Yes. <laughs> I love it. Thank you so much, Yvette. Okay, so real quick before I let you go, what do you have coming out? And I want to, look, I need to be front row center the next time you are performing on stage. But please let me know, Yvette. Okay. I am working on, I'm putting together something. I'm not going to say what that is because it's not even solid, but I'm working on something and you will know. As far as what I'm doing now, you can catch me on uh, the new season of Bosch. I am. I have a recurring as a judge. I've done 20s. Um, somebody said they just saw me now. If you have children, you can catch Raven's Home and on that. So I'm, I'm kind of all over the place, which is nice. No, but I, as far as live performing, hopefully in the next couple of months. Okay. So I will keep you in your audience. Thank you. You're welcome. And please give everybody your Instagram handle so they can come following you now that you yes. to this Follow social media. Me. <laughs> On um, Instagram at uh, at Betty Bet at Betty Bet B E T. -E and I'm on Facebook. I'm still an old head. I'm on Facebook at um, Yvette Kassan. Okay. 
Amen. All right, guys. Well, before I let you go, you know you got to raise that glass up. That's mm -hmm. Get the rest of this wine because it is Wine Down yes. Wednesday. Clink, clink, clink. Clink, clink, yes. <laughs> Take care. Absolutely. I will. I love the nail polish. That's so beautiful. Because I knew you were coming. I knew. I'm in. I'm in. Everybody be, be safe. Let's take care. Take care of each other. Absolutely. All right. All right so Love you so much. Thank you so much. And guys, thank you guys for tuning in for another edition of Wine Down Wednesday with my fabulous lady of the week, Miss Yvette Quezon. I will be back in two weeks. We have two more episodes left before this girl, like I said, at the top of the show, will be taking a vacation and I will be back in August. What'd you say? We're hitting the road. I am hitting the road, honey. I'm gone, gone. <laughs> okay, honey. Take For sure. All right, guys. All right. See y'all later. Bye.